Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanaliza Dawn. I'm your host, Chad Fury333, with a match between, well, a bunch of exhibition matches, starting out with a match between Philipstep and Dynafriend on Living Lands. So let's just get started. Living Lands should be a very familiar map by now. Small, very important hill. Sides are also important. Probably we'll see Flipstep going over to the south and Dynafriend over to the north, because that's usually what happens. Dynafriend going for shield bots. Opening with the typical dirtbag scout, while Flipstep going for heavy tanks, a little bit unusual. Heavy tanks aren't. They don't seem to be used very often nowadays. I mean, they're not terrible, they're just... They're just not as popular as they used to be. Either that or Loria just has been playing a lot recently, and that could be it too. Because Loria loved heavy tanks. Well, probably still does, actually, but they definitely did. Anyway, looks like the early scouting is probably going to go in Flipstip's favor. It really depends on Micro. The thing with heavy tanks, and one of the reasons they're not super popular, is because of the fact that they are a heavyweight factory. Pretty much every one of their units costs several hundred metal. Like, their cheapest unit, the Kodachi, costs 180 metal, and it's... it's one unit. That's basically taking the same position as a bandit at 75 metal. Like, it costs twice as much as basically any other raider, even compared to the Scorcher, which is the light vehicle equivalent. It's still one and a half times as expensive. So you have to make sure to kill things, and it's kind of tough to do without dying. On the other hand, if it gets some good hit-and-run attacks in, because, of course, the fire, then it can do some damage, and that defender is not going to go down Actually, no, it is going to go down. It's burning way too fast to be repaired. Dying Friend definitely, de desperately trying to keep it alive is not going to succeed in doing so. And that opens with the Kodachi to attack the... Oh, nice, attacking the Metal Extractors in the back. That'll work well. On the other hand, Flips to be able to get scattered out, but not really, not really too threatened. That was really not that big of a deal. And with three Metal Extractors going down, Dying Friend losing all their metal, or almost all. Didn't go for the last one. The Kodachi held fire at the very end, but that's fine. Still more than enough metal extractors to keep flips to busy or to keep Dime Friend busy. Dime Friend will have Ooh, is that that constructor is gonna go down too? Nothing defending that convict over in the eastern side of the map. So Dime Friend losing an early constructor. This is huge. Far bigger than the metal extractors. Those will be rebuilt, those will be reclaimed, no problem. But losing that convict is a big deal, and no harassment from Dime Friend either. Flipstep basically getting away with this. Two Panthers following up, which I mean the Kodachi is dead. But the Kodachi did loads of damage. We'll be able to get rid of that bandit that killed it too posthumously, but getting rid of this contract, that convict is basically the thing. Everything else was kind of a bonus, and that was quite a bit taken care of. The two Panthers coming in afterwards should be able to get rid of the Defender no problem. Probably won't go for the Commander directly, though at this point the main base is so vulnerable they should just go for it. There's really no reason not to. Flipstep can just go in there, with those Panthers, they are building up some Banishers. Probably going to wait until that one's done. I'm not sure, though. It looks like Flipstep really building up more towards the late game. That's really where the Heavy Tank Factory shines, so there's no surprises there. And Panthers to get rid of the Defender, because why not? Break that up. Dynafriend's Commander also with the Lightning Gun. Why not? I believe this was actually done in the most... Actually, no, this is before the most recent patch. Yeah, the most recent version of the game nerfed the lightning gun a bit. This is pre-nerf, so that's the more powerful lightning gun. 256 damage, 640 stun. Or, no, this is post-nerf, never mind. 220 and 550. That was a balance change that must have happened in between. So, good thing I checked, because that was actually a nerfed lightning gun. Still, Flipstep's not really playing for Panthers. They're playing the Panthers for distraction and raiding. What they really want, of course, is those banishers. They want that done, and it's done. The first banisher is out of the gate, and there will be... Reaper, well, Kodachi as well, but Reacher, Reaper following. Of course, Banisher Reaper is basically the mid-game composition for the Heavy Tank Factory. That is going to be pretty exciting when it comes down to it. The Dive Friend already preparing, getting up some roaches, probably going to set them up on this ramp and over here, possibly setting them up in the center. I mean, it's it's not a bad place to set it up in the center, but the center is a bit risky, because that might, of course, involve blowing up Dive Friend's own things. Setting them over the ramps here... That would help a lot more. Well, okay, the one thing is the vehicles are going to come through the center, most likely. Because that's all flat ground, and vehicles don't like hills. So, most likely it would be coming through the center, but of course the roach is in the center, that's risky. And the roach is going to go towards the center, though. In fact, going to be right in front of this advancing force. I think Flipstep sees it. Oh, it's hard to tell if Flipstep saw it. No, Flipstep didn't see it. The roach able to go off, get getting rid of a panther, making double cost in the process. That was... That was an efficient Roach. Although even then, a lot of damage is being dealt. Flipstep able to get rid of another Metal Extractor for three, and a Roach being spotted before it's able to do much damage. 
ultimately getting rid of... Nice getting rid of the Convict there. That was the worst possible Roach setup for Timefront. Flipstep is doing a wonderful job just ripping this stuff apart. Timefront's commander probably in the safest spot they could possibly be. This is actually vehicle unpathable. Like they're, the purple, there's no way up there. These tanks cannot get up there. So Flipstep's commander against Dimefront's commander. Dimefront's commander will be going down, though. There's a little bit of a damage. Oh, wait. Flipstep, Flipstep getting stunned, but Dimefront's commander, even with a stun, probably won't be able to win this. And indeed, it goes down. Flipstep's commander survives the commander explosion. And with that, takes the game. Well, that was a good demonstration of the rating power of heavy tanks, if I can say so myself. That was... Definitely the early Kodachi was probably the biggest... The biggest thing was the Kodachi. Getting rid of the Convict over here, slowing down the expansion attempts. That kept Dimefront from really getting their economy up. One thing, though, Dimefront did not expand. Oh, sorry, not, not harass. They expanded a bit, but they didn't really harass at all. So Flipstep got a lot of damage done, and Dimefront never really retaliated in kind. So that... You know, the Roaches, they were an okay idea. A little bit late was the only thing. They would have worked far better if they had been, like, half a minute earlier... That would have been beautiful. Unfortunately, they were a little bit late, and losing that Convict, not getting rid of the tanks in the process. That really was a game of minor things, of small things that made the game go one way or the other. Well, that and the fact that losing a... I mean, losing the early Convict, that's a huge deal. You never want to lose early workers if you can help it. Anyway, that was that game, so the next game is going to be between 400 and Aquanim on Vitra which will be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.